Speaking of love and hate, if love was a woman and hate was a man, I wonder if they would find each other attractive. Really, if both love and hate just walked into a bar, would they attract each other? Pay the cover charge, notice each other from afar, and just attack each other despite the fact that opposites attract each other. I wonder if it would be like at first sight. And love came to hate's crib by the end of the night and together they shared a whole bottle of Moscato because that's love's favorite. So now love's a little tipsy. Soon her dress hits the floor, but hate says, wait, I've never made love before. So love stares at hate deep in the eyes and replies, baby, without you, there is no me. You do more than just make me. So stop hating and create me. I wonder if day is the mother of night and the sun rises when the moon is tucked in tight and the stars light the skies and harmonize sweet lullabies but night cries cause he wants to play with the fireflies so mother day reads night this bedtime story about the little engine that could cause that's his favorite and as she reads each word letter by letter night calms down and slowly feels better and better till his eyes become far too heavy to hold so finally they close and night seems to be asleep so Mother Day just enjoys the brief moment of relief, puts behind her the long hours she clocked in for the week, tries to sneak out and turn off the light, but all of a sudden night reopens his eyes, realizes that his day has just gone by, so then he cries, Mama, could you please just stay with me? Because I'm scared of the dark. And Mother Day stares at night in the eyes and sighs and says, Son, go to sleep and be a good night. There is no such thing as darkness. Only the absence of light. Sleep tight. Yeah. Uh, yeah. I wonder if pleasure and pain are like fraternal twin sister and brother. Because you know, you can't really find one without feeling the other. And I wonder if the mother is greed and when she gave birth, pain came first. But about three minutes later, pleasure followed. And, and both babies cried and cried until their cries reached a certain level of intensity that became damn near impossible to tell the difference between the two. So growing up, pleasure wore red and pain wore blue. So when greed got confused, she could tell who was who. So together they grew. And everywhere that pleasure went, pain was right around the corner. And everything that pain did, pleasure had to join it. Till one day, for whatever reason, pleasure was in a real bad mood, so pain came through and gave a uh, Reese's peanut butter cup. <laughs> so that's her favorite. And she smiled. And they shared them together. See, since the pain was so good, it made pleasure feel better. But I wonder if good is the root of all evil. I mean, if God was here first, who gave evil birth? Maybe all evil things really made good sense. Perhaps God created evil to prove that he exists. And I wonder if it was God's plan to make life this miracle mosaic of antithesis. And if he intentionally made grief the interval between two moments of joy. I wonder if it was God's plan to make peace the interlude between two wars. And if he purposely placed the thorn on every rose on earth so that only the most diligent picker will avoid the pricks and gather the flower. See, I bet it's no coincidence that every bee has a sting, yet cleverness consists in gathering the honey nevertheless and I wonder why he always torments us by always placing the truth within a lie why a brother can't win for losing why what goes up must come down while you can't taste victory until you eat defeat but it's not important to me why weeping must endure for a night as long as I know that there's joy coming in the morning and I don't care why whenever it rains it pours as long as I know that there's a rainbow on its way so I want to know why creation only destroys as it goes on yeah. Yeah. And why everything wrong feels so damn right. But I guess that's what makes death so easy. It's a long, hard life. All right, man. Yeah.